We are now recording. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Sam Cardamone. I am the director in the study abroad office. Uh, I use he, him, his pronouns. And um, today we're going to be talking about the University of the West Indies. Um, they have three campuses. The way that I often talk about UWI is kind of like SUNY. Uh, SUNY has 64 campuses, uh, all of them. Geneseo is one of those campuses. Oneonta, Oswego, Plattsburgh, Albany, all these other campuses. Uh, they all award degrees and they have their own majors. They have their own degree programs. UWI kind of is the same thing. They have this overarching uh, identity as, as the University of the West Indies. And then there's the Jamaica Mona campus. There is the Barbados campus and the Trinidad and Tobago campus, uh, Cape Hill and St. Augustine. Um, when a student studies abroad at the University of the West Indies, they choose one of the campuses and joining us here today, Haley, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us where you studied? Um, my name is Haley Saunders. Um, I'm a senior this year and last spring I studied abroad, abroad at the Mona campus in Jamaica. Excellent. So Haley's going to be talking with, about, with us about her experience uh, in Jamaica, as well as probably sharing with us her experience uh, being on study abroad when all students had to return from studying abroad uh, in March 2020 as a result of COVID-19. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, we have a couple students here live with us. Uh, we are recording right now. Uh, you, you are certainly welcome to just unmute yourself and ask questions but you are also welcome to use the chat and ask questions. And if you'd rather not ask a question while we're recording, uh, there will be an opportunity when we end the recording for you to ask questions afterward. So I'm gonna share my screen with you all. I've got a few slides that are gonna guide us through a co our conversation here. And uh, that will get us started, here we go. So, all right. Haley, give me a thumbs up if you see the blue PowerPoint. Excellent, thank you. All right, um, so this is what we call a semester exchange program. What that means is that we send students to UWI, and that's the short abbreviation of UWI, UWI. We send students to UWI and UWI has the ability to send students to us. Uh, so that's what we call a semester exchange program. Why does that matter? The huge benefit is that if you study at UWI for a semester as a Geneseo student, you will pay SUNY Geneseo tuition, either in state or out of state, depending on whatever your uh, tuition rate is. Why does that matter? Because many of our other programs, about 50% of our programs are exchange programs and 50% are uh, what we call study abroad programs. And what that means is when you go on an exchange program, your tuition remains the same. When you go on a study abroad program, often the university you're studying at, the tuition is slightly higher. So you pay what we call the tuition differential. We'll look at that a little bit more deeply when we get into cost. But um, I always start by explaining the difference between exchange and study abroad because it makes a huge difference in cost, but no difference at all in, in terms of the experience. So the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, the North Atlantic Sea, uh, many, many island nations and, and islands spread out here. Uh, the University of the West Indies, um, they consider, they call the area that, you know, generally the Commonwealth nations of the, of, of the Caribbean. Um, and that includes Jamaica, where the Mona campus is located. Uh, over here, you see Barbados, and just off the coast of South America, out of, off the coast of Venezuela there, you see Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, there are three campuses that make up the UE system, um, and UE students actually have the ability to, to go and study at the different campuses. Some students will choose to do that. Many will earn their full degree at their single campus. Um, Hagley spent a was intending to spend a full semester in, in Jamaica. Um, do you want to start, Haley, just by telling us a little bit about what was the atmosphere like in Jamaica in terms of like, what was the climate? What was the weather? What was the geography like for you? Um, it's hot. That's 
the first thing coming from New York in the middle of winter it's crazy like the first couple of days it was really hard getting used to the heat and stuff but then after a while it's more of like a dry heat and it's constantly windy so like going to classes you'll get used to it I guess and it's like a pretty long walk to classes definitely more than Geneseo but it's flat too but there also are like a bunch of mountain ranges like when I was there I had the opportunity to climb the blue mountain and stuff and see like the peak sunset and different things so there are mountains and different things but generally it's a pretty flat area close to the ocean it's like 40 minutes away from Kingston so yeah, the campus is located outside the capital, which is Kingston, Jamaica, and uh, in the direction of the foothill of the Blue Hill, uh, the Blue Mountains, as, as Haley was talking about. Or really, uh, did you like the campus? Did you did you appreciate its location? Yeah, it was really convenient. Like I could walk into like town and be able to get things from the marketplace. I was able to get taxis anywhere. It was really convenient to go into Kingston because there's so much going on. Like. Bob Marley's birthday was two days ago, I think. And we were able to go to a Bob Marley tribute concert and see some of his brothers and different things. And it's just a very convenient location. You could go almost anywhere. That's awesome. Excellent. Um, and you started to talk a little bit about like uh, daily life and stuff like that. And I think that, um, Give us a little bit of, we've got a few pictures here indicating all the different campuses, but if you wanna just talk a little bit more about kind of what was the atmosphere on the campus geographically and, and, and uh, getting in between campus and town. Um, so the campus is similar to Geneseo, I guess, in the fact that it's an open campus, so people can come in and out whenever they please, which can be like a good and a bad thing. You have like run into lots of different people um the students are always busy and off to class and stuff it's huge compared to Geneseo like you'll see so many people on campus and like you do often after a while get to recognize them um everything there is pretty well organized too like you're broken up into different faculties based on what you're studying so I was in the social sciences faculty and all those buildings are pretty much grouped together and the whole campus is on a giant ring. So as long as you follow that ring around, you'll be able to find basically anything. And then there's a bunch of shortcuts to get to places a lot easier. Perfect. Um, hot, green, and uh, a lot of use of the outdoor space because of the nice weather. There's, there's not really a lot of tunnels and things connecting places because there doesn't need to be. Um, and Haley, you kind of did an excellent segue here. Academics, uh, as you mentioned, the university is organized into faculties. Um, students generally will, will belong to one faculty, but the, the great benefit is you actually can take courses from different faculties. It's just that means that like the faculties, as Haley was talking about, sort of means that like all the social sciences are over here in one geographic location and all of the humanities and education are over here in another location so if you wanted to take coursework from caribbean literature in the humanities and coursework from psychology it just might mean that you're traveling some distance between those buildings but you'd still be allowed to do that so Haley, what's your major international relations and what kind of if you can remember what what were the names of the courses that you were taking while you were there or the topics even generally um, I took an international securities issues class, a comparative like foreign policy, criminal justice systems, which is really cool because it was talked about like criminal justice in the Caribbean and like being able to compare it to the U.S. criminal justice system. It was really interesting. And then uh, climate change and governance, which is really cool because like it's such a different perspective, I guess, looking at how climate change is affecting the Caribbean versus like us as Western um, nations. But like in general, is a really close perspective to take like IR classes in there because you, we think in like US mindset where like they are in a small state mindset. So like the different types of policies they have are so different and they have to act in such a different way than we do. And that's how it is with a lot of small states. 
Excellent. And, and the courses that you were taking, obviously, you said you're an international relations major, um, you know, comparative politics and, and criminal justice and things like that. Were the courses you were taking able to contribute to your degree completion? Yeah, all of them counted, I think, in different ways. Two counted towards my major and then the other two were like extra credits and stuff. So, Excellent. One of the frequent myths that the study abroad office staff is usually contending with is a lot of students think if I study abroad for a semester, uh, will I be able to take classes that help me graduate? And and I, I know that you and I work closely on this before you left. Um, and, and that's what the study abroad office is here to do. But do you want to, if you can remember that, do you uh, just talk a little bit about your experience of kind of reviewing courses and getting approvals and stuff like that? It was kind of a lengthy process. I remember we had some issues with what courses were being offered in the spring. It's really different how UE does it. They like list all their courses that they're going to offer in the spring pretty last minute in comparison to like when Geneseo does our registration period. But after those courses were listed, it was really easy. I just had to go to the um, chair of the IR department and he signed off on them and then same with my minors, they signed off and then I already knew by the time I was going what classes were gonna count where and like what I still needed for my fall semester once I came back. And that's exactly what we want. We want students to go in, uh, we recognize every university does not operate on the same calendar and timeline as we do. And as Haley said, you know, UWI publishes their course offerings kind of late. The good news is, many of our academic departments are really supportive of study abroad and they want to make it work for you so no matter what your major is uh there will be a process by which you you say i want to take this class and then you go to your department chair and your department chair says and that that the suny geneseo equivalent is this um, we call that the course approval process there is a course approval form and that form as Haley was talking about she got her courses signed off that document is sort of like a contract between you and your department to say if i take this class it's going to satisfy this requirement that way you have confidence going into it knowing that if i take these courses i am making progress on my degree completion how did you find the courses did you find them to be the same challenging level more challenging less challenging um it was interesting like it there was way less coursework you'd get like maybe one big assignment and that was pretty much everything it was great off of and then you had your finals which were like worth 50 percent of your grade so like i wouldn't say it was harder but also like the students there are geniuses like being in the room with them like they just know so much more than i did at the time but it i was able to catch up i guess like they are much more aware of what's going on in the world and that's just like how that the faculty of social science and like that major is there they just they constantly know what's going on and they're very competitive with one, one another. The University of the West Indies, I mean, oftentimes people, especially being raised in, in the United States, we think of the Caribbean as a vacation destination. Uh, we don't think of it as a uh, location of, of academia, uh, but UWI is consistently ranked in the top 400 universities in the world. It is a top ranked university in the world. It's a, it's a and Haley makes a really good point here. They do fewer assignments, but each of those assignments is higher stakes. Um, you might have one big final exam or one big paper, but that might represent 50% of your grade. So it's really important. Geneseo, the United States, we use a lot of what we call continuous assessment, where at the end of week one, there's going to be a quiz on everything that was covered in week one, and then there's going to be a homework assignment, and then there's going to be another quiz, and then there's going to be an exam, and there's going to be a total of maybe four exams over the course of the semester. So you're constantly at Geneseo, you're constantly getting feedback about how you're doing. Wow, that first quiz, I got a 50%. A I need to be studying more. There, there's fewer assignments. So it's really important to be a self-directed learner uh, because, because of the nature of fewer assignments, there's fewer opportunities to get that feedback to know how you're doing. Would you say that that's all true, Haley? Yeah, that's really true. Like when I, I turned in, like, so we had a class where like you could turn in multiple times until you get like a high enough grade. And like I did the first assignment and I was shocked. I did terrible on it, but she gave me a lot of constructive feedback and I was able to improve. 
but like that's the thing like you got to be able to perform really well the first time around I guess yeah um that's great that they they uh that your instructor was using kind of a uh scaffolded is what we would call it approach where you were able to submit get feedback submit again uh, the important thing there is make sure you submit before the final deadline, otherwise you're not going to have any time to get feedback and improve. So really, really useful uh, information there. Another big thing that they did too is presentations constantly. Like I, I feel like you probably will go into about how the classes are created with like tutorials and stuff, but I had to do presentations for every single one of my classes and like it's, I don't know, it's very different than what we're used to, I guess. It's more relaxed than our type of presentations here, but like, I'm just, four presentations in one semester was far more than I was ever used to at Geneseo. Now you did four presentations, one in each of your courses or four yeah. presentations in each class? One in each class. Got it. And, and you, you alluded to this, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, lecture tutorial, what does that mean? So lecture, you basically just go and you get all the information and then tutorial is generally you're applying that information. So the way all my classes and tutorials were structured, a person had to present or partners would present every tutorial. So each time you'd go and then you'd have to ask questions and participate in order to get your credit for that. And so in a let's focus on one class right now. Um, in one class, how frequently would you be in class? How much time was spent each week in lecture and how much time was spent each week in tutorial? Um, let me look at my schedule from last semester. While Haley looks that up, what, what it usually is, just to further explain this model, this is sort of the old British model. And um, UWI being former British, many of the countries being former British colonies, they imported the British model of higher education, which is, and this is also common in other former British Commonwealth nations. Um, this is still used very much in Australia, which is usually it's one or two hours each week of lecture where as Haley described it, you're just sort of, you're in a very large room with a lot of people and it's, it's the lecture being delivered um, and there's not a lot of back and forth interaction. And then in the same week, you will get together in a smaller group, maybe 20 to 30 people, and you'll have what's called tutorial. And that, as Haley was talking about, different groups in uh, students in the class would have to present on the topic of that week. Uh, a lot of times that's also the time where you spend time debating, discussing, and, and sort of breaking down the ideas that were discussed in lecture that week. So all that sound correct, Haley? Yeah, so all my classes, their lectures were two hours each, and then I would have a tutorial once a week, and that'd be an hour long. So you'd only meet twice a week, and generally tutorials were really small. I think the most I probably ever had was 20 in a class. Mm -hmm. And but like most of the social sciences classes, um, especially the higher up ones are really small and like maybe 20, 15 people even in your lecture too. Yeah. So that's the model, this lecture tutorial model, two hours of lecture, one hour of tutorial. That's just like Geneseo in the sense that our three credit classes, if you add it up, they meet three times a week for one hour or, you know, for one straight three hour section. So three hours a week for a class is the norm. Any other comments on academics before we move on? Um, not that I could think of right now. Oh, actually, um, yeah. If you have the opportunity and you're going, take some of like the music and cultural classes that they have there. I had friends that took Bob Marley and their music and they got to go on field trips. Field trips are really common there too. Before I had to leave, I was supposed to go to a Jamaican prison for my, um, criminal justice class and like for my uh, climate change we were going to go to a beach where a hurricane had hit like a couple years earlier so like that's a really cool part is that a lot of them do off-campus um, field trips so that you get like in-depth experience. Excellent and and that is something that the study abroad office always encourages students that if you have the flexibility in your schedule always take a course that exposes you 
to the culture. Uh, it's, it's part of the reason that you're going is, is to learn a bit more about that place. And there's incredible ways to do that through food, through music, through geography, through history, all those things. All right, housing, where did you live and how was it? I lived on campus in, it was called Rex Nettleford. Um, it's really similar to an apartment, I guess. And like, so there's a bunch of different clusters of buildings, each having flats with eight people living in each one. So you get your own room and then a kitchen and then a shared bathroom. Um, at first it was very different than Geneseo and you have to like understand that like they don't come in and clean after people move out so like you'll when I moved in initially I found a bunch of stuff in my room that I had to clean out and it's just a the rooms are also really small too because it's only for one person to live in but the community sense you get in housing especially in like Rex and some of the other places is way better than you would get in some of like the apartment buildings that they have options for. Like a lot of the grad students stay there. And I know some of my friends ended up moving to them, but like having flatmates that like were there for me and wanted to be my friend and stuff was huge. And it was such a community type of campus that like, it's nice to have a housing situation like that. And um, you mentioned a little bit about like the amenities there was a, a little sh a small kitchen space there for you in your in your flat area mm -hmm. um what was the meals situation like was there any kind of dining hall and did you have a dining card or did you make all your own meals um there's no dining halls you have to either buy all your food on campus they have i think a little caesar's maybe a wendy's and stuff like some of the food that we're used to in the u.s um, on Fridays, I would go and shop at like the local store and stuff and bring the groceries back. And that's what I'd have in the weeks. Or sometimes I'd just stop and get food on campus. There's a bunch of little stands that they have that sell fruit and different like snacks, I guess. Street vendors around. And um, there's also, I, I think there's a little like dining area with the, can the campus canteen or something like that, I think. Yeah, there's a bunch like, of different restaurants. Right. I don't think I've ever been there, but like okay. I've seen it for sure. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different food options around, but it doesn't have the structured campus dining hall. Um, and, and more, as Haley said, UWI, it's a public university. So it is open to the public. People are coming and going. And, and you know, if somebody from outside of the campus wants to go to the Little Caesars on campus, they can do that. Um, which is sort of different because I don't think that anybody from the town of Geneseo is coming to campus to go to our dining halls, It's kind of a, a different thing, but it does create this movement between the community and the campus pretty fluid. Um, but the housing, as, as I understand it, is very, did you ever feel unsafe in the housing or around the housing? Um, and speak honestly. Honestly, we did have an incident where someone broke in there. There are problems in the area, but they do a really got good job of keeping us safe. Like the person that did try to break into our flat, they caught him right away. And like, they were able to get him off campus. Like my roommate had, before I got there, she'd been attacked by someone who was trying to steal her phone and stuff. You just have to be careful and know where you're at. Like I was very aware of where I was and what I had to do. And my roommates also made sure that like, I knew that I needed to be safe, but like, other than that, I could sleep through the night. I never was really worried. I slept through the night that that person, I guess, came to our flat and tried to break in. They were the ones that told me the next morning. But other than that, it's a pretty safe area. And um, Haley, you, you, you kind of are making allusions to like also the interaction off campus and, and taking safety and precaution when, when venturing away from campus. So it sounds like generally you felt pretty safe around campus, but there was also things that you did to improve your safety, like walking alone at night, probably something that you avoided or hopefully didn't do at all. Yeah, I once I got there, I was originally in five classes, but I had to drop one of my night classes because my roommates told me that I shouldn't be walking across the campus at night. And like we at night sometimes would have to go and pick up our other roommates just because it's not safe to be alone. And like, it's, even though it's on campus, anybody can come on campus. My roommate was attacked right outside of our like building complex and she was still on campus. 
And so you just got to be careful and aware of what time of night it is and like make sure you don't go in dark corners, I guess. There's places that are poorly lit that you should just avoid in general. And when you're talking about, a, when you use the general term attacked, was this a theft or a violent attack? Um, she was stabbed in the hand, like they cut her hand open and then they took her phones. And then when I came, she was in physical therapy for most of the semester. So like, it was pretty violent. Um, yeah. But yeah, they were just very cautious of me and stuff because I stuck out and people... Yeah, they just told me what to do. And it was really nice to have that type of person, like all of them there, making sure that I was safe all the time. Our office is, we, we try to stay as aware as possible of any incidences that involve our own students. This is the first time I'm learning about Haley's uh, roommate, but this again, isn't something that is normally reported to the study abroad office because it didn't involve Haley herself. Um, so we, we track all of these things. Students are often asking like, what are you doing to, to improve the safety of our students? And, and the answer is we do a lot of pre-departure orientation. Um, Haley, I think we talked about some of this stuff before you left and, and just strategies to uh, improve your safety traveling in groups. And, and the experience of our office is we've heard about students having theft issues in the past. This is my first hearing of any violent crime stories uh, involving anybody close to our students. Um, but uh, it certainly can happen. And, and it sounded like it was more about the theft anyway. It was about stealing the phone more so than trying to physically harm somebody. Um, but that is common. There is common issues of theft. We've had students who have had phones, book bags, purses, things like that stolen over the years. That is common. And the other thing I would really emphasize is crimes of opportunity. Um, if you are at the library and you set your bag down and go use the bathroom, it is very likely that that bag may not be there anymore. Um, so slightly different behavior than students are used to at Geneseo where you might leave your laptop and you go use the bathroom and you come back and your laptop's still there if you're at Geneseo Library. Uh, that's not necessarily the case in a lot. And this isn't just UWI. This is a lot of our study abroad destinations. Crimes of opportunity are, are much more prevalent in other parts of the world. So we touched on housing. We touched on food. We touched on health and safety. We're going to move on now. And again, uh, for our, our folks who are joining, um, if you have any questions, you are welcome to send them through the chat or... or um, you can also just unmute yourself and, and ask at any time. We invite you to do that. Um, UWI more or less follows a calendar very similar to the Geneseo calendar. Their fall semester uh, runs from late August to mid-December. Their, their spring semester from mid-January to mid-May. Um, to apply, uh, we ask that students submit their applications by February 1st if they're interested in next fall or the academic year. Uh, for the students who are joining us right now, if you are interested in going next fall or next academic year, we do have the ability to accept a late application. So obviously, it's already past February 1st. The important thing is get in touch with our office right away. You can send me an email uh, right now while you're sitting at your computer. My email address is cardamone, C-A-R-D-A-M-O-N-E at geneseo.edu. And we can try to get you get your application in right away. If you're thinking about something for next year uh, or next spring, I should say, uh, you can see your deadline should be September 1. So you should be working on that application over the summer. And then we are going to talk about the cost. So I'm going to bring up one of the cost sheets here. Give me one moment. Here we go. And Haley, give me a thumbs up. Do you see that cost sheet? Excellent. Thank you. So um, that link takes us here. This is where we keep uh, all of our information for the cost sheets. As I mentioned, for Geneseo students, this is an exchange program. So if we open up this exchange link, you can see um, now this is the cost sheet from 2019, 2020. We are working right now on creating the cost sheets for next year. Um, but if you are a New York state resident, 
you fall into these three columns. If you're an out of New York State resident, you fall into these three columns. And then depending on when you want to go, you just follow that down. So if you wanted to do a full academic year, you'd be looking here. But if you're thinking about next fall, it's a $20 application fee, $780 study abroad differential. Uh, our office collects a $500 fee to facilitate the exchange. And then every student who studies abroad must have SUNY International Health and Repatriation Insurance. That's health insurance in case you get sick while you're abroad. Uh, that's another $280 wrapped in there. And then you pay your SUNY Geneseo tuition. Um, and that has gone up to 35 35 this year. And it is likely to go up, I think, again to 36 85 next year, up by another $150. Um, and then visa fees. Let's pause there for a minute. Haley, do you recall your experience of getting the visa? Yeah, it was awful, honestly. Um, don't go to New York City. They were terrible. Me and my dad ended up driving down, I think on New Year's Eve to pick up my, or get my visa in Washington, DC. Um, then we had to have it overnight shipped and they almost didn't ship it. It was pretty much a mess but as long as you stay on top of that then it's not a problem like you can't rely on um the people that do the visa to like be very quick and efficient they have a ton of other people and like they're working at their own speed they don't really care about what you're doing so you need to make sure you're calling them constantly if you haven't been hearing back and Haley's experience is partly informed by the fact if, if you're a student who's going to go study abroad in the spring semester there's a much smaller window from the end of the fall to the start of the spring. So Haley was working with a very compressed timeline uh, from the time that she received. One of, the, one of the documents you need to receive from UE is an acceptance letter. So depending on when UE sends that, then you're working with a very compressed timeline to submit your documents. A visa is the document you need to, to study in another country. And Jamaica requires that you apply for that visa in the United States before you arrive in Jamaica. Uh, other countries have different policies, um, but um, you can, and, and Haley said, don't work with New York City. That is where the consulate is located. There's a difference between consulates and embassies, uh, depending on, on when you go and which is more operational. I would suspect that the embassy is actually doing much more consular affairs right now than New York City just based on COVID restrictions. My assumption is that New Washington DC would be a much better place to send any visa application right now than New York City for exactly that reason. But um, our office is able to help you in that regard in terms of providing guidance. But as Haley said, you are your best advocate to follow up and, and to, to uh, keep on top of the consular officers. So that has a fee associated with it. And then airfare, depending on um, when you buy, we often estimate high. Haley, do you have any idea? What, what Do you remember what maybe you spent on airfare? Might have been $500 for round trip tickets, but then that had to change because of COVID and I had to do like a crazy one to avoid the big airports and stuff. But it wasn't $1,000. Like I think with both tickets, it was probably 800 or something. Um, we, we do a high estimate on the cost sheet because this is the document that the financial aid office uses to determine your aid eligibility. So we want these numbers to be realistic, but we want them on the high end so that you are eligible for as much aid as possible. Um, accommodation, you can see at Geneseo, your accommodation is about $4,000 per semester. It's significantly less at about $2,700, depending on which building you're in, different buildings have different costs, different buildings, if you're in a shared room or an individual room have a different cost. Haley, do you have any idea what yours was? Way, way cheaper than that. I think it was 700 or 800. It was way cheaper for me to be in Jamaica than I was to be here in Geneseo. Yeah. And then food, we estimate that at $1,800, which is $100 per week. This is a high estimate as well. Many students spend a lot less than $100 a week on food because if you go to the grocery store, you're buying local fruit and vegetables. It can be very inexpensive to prepare your own meals. It's also really inexpensive to buy local prepared food there. A rice and, and meat sort of lunch uh, might only cost you 
somewhere between two and five dollars, something like that. Books. Uh, many students get away with not buying any books. Haley, did you buy any books? No, I didn't buy any books. Yeah. Um, how, so what did you do? Did you share books? Did you go to the library or did um, your did your teachers not require any? I think my teachers might have required them, but like I didn't necessarily need them for the readings, I guess, or they were uploaded in PDF form to like, it's called Orvili. It's kind of like our canvas. Um, yeah, you didn't need books at all, for, at least for my classes. And then personal expenses. This is what I call fun money. This is what you're going to do on the weekends. This is going out on Friday and Saturday night. This is going to the beach and, and other places. Um, so this is the number that's most variable. So, uh, students can spend a lot of money if they want to go zip lining and do all kinds of other things. Or this can be a really small amount. Do you have any idea what how how what what were you doing where you were spending fun money? Um, so I went to the Bob Marley concert, and that wasn't a lot. It might have been twenty dollars at most. Um, climbing the Blue Mountain that was like a guided tour overnight with food paid for and stuff, and that wasn't too expensive. Maybe fifty dollars. I went to a beach across the island, and that probably was the most expensive expensive but like I'd say maybe a hundred dollars to get there and for like to split the Airbnb um I think my friends went to a club and that's where they met Usain Bolt for the first time and that wasn't expensive either and then yeah it's not too expensive to do much around Jamaica it's pretty reasonable and a lot of things are like group activities that are planned so it's reduced fees too and uh, casual name drop, you can run into Usain Bolt, uh, clearly. Uh, yeah, we ran did into you him have, twice. Did you, did you meet him? Yeah, I actually, well, not, I didn't meet him, I guess. We were on a boat heading to an island and he was partying on his yacht and we passed his yacht. So I got a picture of him waving. And then the second night that we'd gotten there, some of my friends went out to a club and they got pictures with him that night. So that was the second time they saw him. Who knew? Very yeah. cool. Uh, and then UWI has some of its own student fees depending on using, uh, whereas at Geneseo, we kind of charge all of your tuition and fees and that gives you access to the, to the um, like library and printing and uh, sports facility fees and all those things. UWI tends to treat that more like a la carte. If you're using this, you get charged for it. If you're using that, you get charged for it. Um, so that's, we estimate that around $280. So um, all said and done about 12,500 for a semester at UWI, that's with your airfare included. I always tell students that might seem like a lot, but the cost of your attendance at Geneseo um, for a semester, the financial aid office estimates that that costs about $12,500. <laughs> so it's almost exactly the same if you're gonna spend a semester in Jamaica versus living on campus for a semester. So that's living on campus with a meal plan is about 12,500. So it's a really affordable program. Um, Haley, any other comments about cost? Um, and that seems like a lot, but it was significantly lower for me. I feel like that's the way high end. Also like this got me first, when they send you their prices and stuff, they put it in Jamaican dollars. So when I got a charge for like a hundred thousand like Jamaican dollars, I almost had a heart attack. But in reality, that's like seven hundred and eight hundred dollars. So you just gotta keep that in mind. Very good point. Different currency, different exchange rate, and uh, through COVID, excuse me, the U.S. dollar has actually improved significantly compared to a lot of other currencies. So. Um, I think the spending power of the US dollar has even gotten better. Um, these are a few different resources that'll take you to different information depending on the uh, campus that you're interested in. And um, that kind of wraps it up. Uh, but Haley, I'd love to know, um, would you do it again? Oh, 100%. It was the best experience of my life. Like. It's such a community there and so different than what you get at Geneseo. I guess like yeah, Geneseo is a community, but like they have um, like different 
they take pride, I guess, in each building. So like say if Stuben versus like Jones or something would be what it's like. And they have sports days. And it's so easy to get involved. Like I did cheerleading with all my roommates and stuff. I've never cheered my life, but it was so much fun just to go out there and do things. Like a hundred percent, I'd go back again. That's awesome. That's great to hear. So obviously you also, in talking about the cheerleading, you're kind of talking about like student activities and stuff like that. And there's a lot of different, I know that there's dance, there's cheer, there's a lot of sport as well as like academic clubs, but also like uh, cultural things with like music groups and performances as well. So a lot of stuff to keep people busy, huh? Mm-hmm. So Abigail, and forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Aga, um, if you have any questions, you can drop them into the chat. Uh, but if you'd rather wait, uh, we can give it another minute here and then I can end the recording. And then if you have any other questions, we can certainly answer those after the recording ends as well. But if you wanna ask one before the recording ends, please go ahead and do that now. Ega. Thank you, Ega. All right. I'm going to stop the recording.